So work is underway on your firm's tallest project ever, the, uh, the Merdeka PNB 118 project in Kuala Lumpur. So what new challenges did you encounter as a designer in working on that scale? Yeah, there were really quite some challenges. Um, obviously, putting a building of that size and height into a, you know, a city like uh, Malaysia comes with a lot of responsibilities. One of the uh, primary responsibilities actually was to create the garden space that was always intended to be there. In fact, it was there for many years, but over time it got eroded. And through development parcelization, it uh, became really um, a site for buildings and uh, parking, motorbikes, etc. So with the sort of intense urbanization that we were doing, we felt it very important to actually integrate the garden spaces. Allow the gardens to be breakout spaces for Stadium Madeka, which is their heritage um, stadium, a, a place of great heritage significance. It's where um, independence was proclaimed in uh, 1957, and so the work that we've done is also provided a linear park, which is a beautiful breakout area to that stadium. The other, uh, another challenge during the design process really was to somehow use our project to improve the infrastructure. This is a slightly run down part of town and the roads don't cope so um, our project has brought underground railway um, MRT, it's brought road improvements, it's brought tunnels in so uh, through the whole design project we were very focused on making this project, even though it was large and was going to bring a lot of people, workers, shoppers, people living here, into the precinct, it had to be a better result for the neighbourhood. Obviously when you're building um, at this scale, you've got to make sure it's a sustainable and properly engineered building. That took a, a, a lot of effort by a lot of fantastic consultants and bringing all of that together within the design was another one of our design challenges. I suppose finally, um, a building like this, it's going to stand out. But we really, really wanted it to be part of the culture of Malaysia. Uh, Petronas Towers did that significantly and beautifully. And not that we would try at all to replicate or do better or whatever than Petronas. It was a very, very good guide. Our building in a different way relates to, we think, the um, various cultures in the way that it's um, formed, the patterns that are articulated via the structure on the mm -hmm. surface of the building. They represent Malaysian patterns. Uh, to us, the, the triangulations represented quite symbolically the different cultures, religions, socio-economic groups in Malaysia and brought them all together as a statement of one Malaysia. How so? Which patterns in particular, <coughs> how do they relate to different groups of, of Malaysia? The diagonal structural pathways in the building have all been clearly articulated in the facade and they form triangular patterns, quite varying in size and, uh, and, and the way they go together. We felt that A, those diamonds in a way uh, represented a lot of the pattern making in, um, in the tapestries and pattern making of Malaysia and we felt also that each of those patterns within the building could represent the social socio-economic groups mm -hmm. and by putting all of those together they were all disparate and quite different but putting them all together to make a statement of one building and therefore a symbol of one Malaysia. So how does the Merdeka PNB 118 continue on the legacy of the Petronas Towers in the sense that that building put Kuala Lumpur on the map? There's no doubt that um, the Petronas Towers had a significant um, impact on the uh, global recognition of Malaysia. And, um, but it also um, made a huge contribution to KL. It regenerated the precinct. It became a place that tourists, um, nationals, everybody associated with, um, with KL and, and with Malaysia. So in the same way, the project that we're doing Medeka PNB 118 is going to regenerate a precinct. Hmm. And that precinct will act 
as a triumvirate, I think, with Petronas Towers, the KL Tower, and us making the third point of that triumvirate. Mm. So I think it's going to regenerate, in a way, a bigger area of Malaysia. Earlier mm. you described it a little bit, but can you tell us about the area that the building is, is in now and what your vision for it is? Yeah. It's, uh, the building's in a terrific old part of KL. It's Chinatown. Mm. And a lot of the buildings, however, are quite run down, and the roads uh, don't cater for the existing amount of traffic. So again, all the infrastructure that we're going to do will improve all of that and help to regenerate the area. I think also that the building is going to become another marker in KL. And if you've ever been to KL as a visitor, it's pretty easy to get a bit confused about where you are. And the Petronas Towers and the way that those two towers um, orient with each other and also with the KL Tower means you can always get a placement of where you are in KL. Mm. I think that our building, because it is so big, um, will actually work in the same way. It'll help to uh, orientate people when they're within uh, KL. Another important attribute of this building is it is a marker to one of the most important heritage sites in Malaysia, I would dare to say. We're often asked, well, what does this building have to do with a, um, an open-air stadium, Stadium Madeka? and uh, Stadium Nagara, a small domed stadium. And I would say that um, it acts not in competition with them, but as a placemaker. Whenever you see this building from anywhere in KL, you will know that that is where um, independence was proclaimed. I think this building will also celebrate another way of showing Malaysian culture. As I said before, the sculpting of the building, it's crystalline. It has patterns that come out of Malaysian culture. I think that is a very recognisable statement about, you know, how, about proud Malaysian cultures. And it's a way of a modern building, a building of the future, reflecting on the heritage and the past of Malaysia mm. and using those symbols very, very subtly. Well, when you were talking about the challenges of designing on this scale, that most of the challenges you mentioned were, were not about the upper half of the building or the, the height of it, even though it's the tallest that, that your firm's done so far, it was about how it met the ground and how the neighborhood interacted with it. Yeah. So how does Merdeka PNB 118, how does the design improve, you mentioned the infrastructure, but how does it connect with the neighborhood and, and improve <coughs> the, the social context there? How does it fit in with the city? The building comes down to ground with a lot of public amenity. It comes down with food street, with retailing, it comes down with ballrooms, it enhances Stadium Medeca with the gardens. The gardens provide linkages right through the site. There's an observation deck, so this is going to attract people uh, to this site, and it's, that observation deck is very, very high in the air, mm. and uh, it's actually accessed by two double-deck elevators on the outside of the building, so it's, the journey itself will be quite a tourist attraction. Um, but in bringing all of this population, it's also dealing with traffic patterns, with pedestrian patterns throughout the whole site. So we think that uh, it will regenerate the area, but it will do it in a very, very respectful way, and it will do it in a way that makes life easier for the people that live there at the moment. Mm -hmm.